We're not going to do a whole lot with it just yet, but I do want to introduce a couple conversion factors for chemistry. We will get lots of practice with these later. One is the mole. The mole, one mole, equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's a number, and it was also called Avogadro's number. And it is the number of items in one um, mole, or let's say this, <laughs> I think I just said that. So one mole of carbon equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, since carbon is an atom. You can see that these two things are equal to each other. And as we've mentioned before, if you look at your periodic table, the 12.01 is also the number of grams per mole. I'm going to add that in here. Grams carbon. And so for the mole, again, we're just introducing this right now, we can have a number of unit conversion factors from these equal statements. Let's make them all. So, or, and in what may be the worst abbreviation in all of science, let alone chemistry, the abbreviation for mole is MOL, drop the E. So one mole carbon per 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms carbon or 12.01 grams carbon per one mole carbon or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms carbon per 12.01 grams carbon. And of course, there are three more of these where each of these is flipped depending upon how you want to get your units to cancel out. That's the mole, and we'll talk more about it and we'll use it, but I wanted to introduce it today. Atoms in a formula, that's another conversion factor. As an example, if we take the formula for water, which is H2O, in one molecule of H2O, there are two atoms of hydrogen. There are two atoms of hydrogen, and that will be a unit conversion factor. So two atoms, hydrogen, per one molecule, H2O. And since a mole is going to be just, um, well, let's skip the mole for now. Anyway, so um, this is a unit conversion factor. As a second example, uh, let's do C2H6. We could get, so one molecule C2H6 per six, six atoms hydrogen And we can also get one molecule C2H6 per two atoms carbon. And there's a third one, six atoms hydrogen per two 
atoms carbon. And again, we'll see more of these, but I wanted to introduce these and have you start thinking about how we're going to use them in unit conversion factors. Now we talked about density and how to calculate it before. Density is another common unit conversion. For example, if you had, and just to define density before I do this example, density equals the ratio of mass over volume. for a substance, and you can see I've got a lot of different densities here. And densities range from less than one to one for water to 21.4 grams per centimeter cubed. We'll also, for units of, uh, let's see, when we talked about water, we actually said we'd prefer to use 1.00 and grams per milliliter which works better for liquids because we can measure liquids in beakers and graduate cylinders. But for solids like platinum, gold, and lead, you tend to measure them so in centimeters, so centimeters cubed works better. Um, so, oh, as an example, um, what is the mass? Or what is the density? of, uh, oh, um, sorry, what is the mass of, um, let's say this, 32.6 uh, centimeters cubed of titanium. We can see that the density of titanium is 4.50 grams per centimeter cubed. This is the part of the lecture on unit conversions. So we're going to turn this into a fraction equal to 1. That's what density is. We have other problems where you actually calculate the density, but once you know the density, it is a unit conversion factor. And we can set this up. 32.6 centimeters cubed is our given. We know that centimeter cubed must go on the bottom to get our units to cancel out. And 4.50 grams per centimeter cubed, that goes on the uh, top. And mathematically, multiply the numbers across the top. Divide by the numbers on the bottom, which is just 1, and we get, oop, put it down here, 146.7 grams, rounded to three sig figs, 147 grams.